Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for returning. And speaking of returning, we're speaking with returning guest, Dr. David Spetzler. He's president and chief scientific officer at Keras Life Sciences, and he's returning to talk about Keras Life Sciences' launch of Code AI. Welcome back, David. Always a pleasure. Thank you. It's always a pleasure for me as well. Well, give uh, any of our listeners who may not be familiar with you a brief background and talk about your role there at Keras, and then let's talk about Code AI. Great. Yeah, I'm a molecular cellular biologist and mathematician by training. Uh, my career has been focused on bringing precision medicine to cancer patients, uh, trying to understand their tumor at the molecular level uh, so that we can help give therapeutic guidance, which drugs to take, which drugs to avoid, uh, really to maximize and personalize their fight against cancer. Um, so Karis has been doing that for uh, over a decade now. Uh, and one of the things that we've accomplished over that period of time was to aggregate an enormous database of molecular data uh, and clinical outcome data. And so we now have a combined data set of clinical and molecular data on over 215,000 patients. Uh, this is the, the largest data set uh, that I've ever uh, heard of. Uh, and so it, it creates a very unique opportunity to really start to leverage what we've been able to accumulate to help identify new therapeutic strategies and interventions to maximize a patient's ability to, to fight their disease. And so that's the, the goal of Code AI. This data set, as you might imagine, is incredibly complex. It's more than a million data points per patient. And so your regular database is not going to be capable of actually mining this data and extracting the information that you want. Um, that's where this interface comes in. And uh, so that's what we uh, have designed Code AI to, to do for people. How does it accomplish such an, a complex task? One of the critical components to kind of understanding the nature of molecular information is to define uh, very specifically the cohort of patients that you want to evaluate. So, um, you know, we often talk in generalities of lung cancer and breast cancer and colon cancer, uh, but the, the reality of clinical research is that we need to drill down and, and be very specific. So we want to look at non-small cell lung cancer patients uh, that are getting frontline immunotherapy and second-line chemotherapy and, uh, within the context of, of that diagnosis with that particular treatment paradigm, what are the influence of biomarkers in terms of understanding uh, which treatments they'll uh, respond better to or, or worse from. Uh, and so that's the nature of the interface. So it starts to allow uh, physicians and researchers to go in and define those cohorts. And once they've got them defined, uh, then it goes through and it scans the plethora of biomarker information that we have, taking into consideration uh, the underlying nature of the data. So, for example, uh, in statistics, um, most of the standard statistics that people are used to talking about um, are built upon underlying assumptions that require the data to come from a normal distribution. Um, a, a normal distribution is the bell curve. Uh, however, many molecular features actually come from uh, an exponential distribution, which is a, a skewed curve. So one side has more than, than the other. And so uh, within this system, we're automatically looking at the nature of the data and then choosing the appropriate statistics so that uh, when the physicians are looking at the data, they don't have to know all the deep math. We're taking mm -hmm. care of the deep math uh, for them. They just have to bring their clinical knowledge to bear to understand, aha, in this particular setting, you know, I am really looking for do I go uh, path A or do I go path B? Uh, and so they can uh, kind of design the cohorts that will give them insight into that. Now, the industry standard, it currently does not accomplish any of the points that you talked about. Is that correct, or does it just expand on those? Um, so the current standard has been to do kind of what we call univariate analysis, and so that's basically looking at one biomarker at a time. Uh, and, and that's um, as been, you know, that's as good as we've been able to do. Um, and mostly it's because of the limitations in technology, but uh, with the advent of next generation sequencing, where we're now able to measure you know, 22,000 genes at the DNA level and 62,000 uh, transcripts at the RNA level, uh, the amount of data we're generating per patient is, is massively increased. And so with that, uh, we should take advantage of the opportunity to do 
uh, multi analyte signature development. And so um, the nature of the molecular biology is, is such that uh, we're dealing with a very complex system. And so this is where applications of machine learning and artificial intelligence are, are absolutely perfect. So those analytic tools um, allow us to analyze lots and lots of pieces of data um, simultaneously, looking for patterns that, that a human couldn't pick out, uh, but the machine can. And that's where the AI part of this comes from. So uh, you know, built into the system is the ability to find these patterns uh, that... You know, if, if you or I were to look at the data, we just wouldn't be able to see it. Humans just aren't good at uh, looking for those types of patterns. Now, is this currently in use with uh, by researchers and healthcare providers? And if so, who has access? Yeah, so um, we've made access available to our uh, partners. So uh, for the last several years, we've been building what we call the Precision Oncology Alliance. Mm-hmm. And so it's a, a group of academic institutions and large community uh, practices that have uh, really been the pioneers in molecular profiling, leading the charge there to to bring this type of information uh, to patient care. And so, um, yeah, by by having contributed outcome data to the data set, we contribute the molecular data, they contribute the outcome data. Uh, that creates this beautiful partnership. And so um, across the POA network, um, all of the physicians and all of their researchers uh, have access to this tool because it's, it's our mission to really uh, democratize this data and disseminate it uh, because no one group or institution is going to be able to solve this problem. It's really going to take, um, you know, as many really smart people working on this as we can uh, bring to bear. And so uh, we want to make the data available in a in a format that makes uh, it very easy for them to, to mine and explore, uh, generate hypotheses so that we can design better clinical trials uh, when it's needed to, to prove it, or uh, you know, sometimes we find patterns that are so clear and obvious that uh, can make decisions right then and there. You know, you mentioned the industry standard. Uh, this is a brand new tool. Why should potential users trust Code AI as a new technology? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So, as as a scientist, I would say they shouldn't trust it. Uh, they should validate it. Okay. Uh, and okay. so, the way that we've approached that is. Um, you know, there have been many, many clinical studies done uh, o- over the years. And so uh, one of the things that, that we look for is, you know, we know, for example, you know, what we should see when we're looking at non-small cell lung cancer patients that were treated with a tyrosine kinase inhibitor uh, based upon their EGFR mutational status. And so, you know, there are known things. And so if we don't recapitulate those trial results in the data, uh, then we're not going to trust the data. And so, um, you know, I think it's a question of, okay, you can trust, but, you know, better is to verify. Uh, and so um, we've done that, and, you know, it's an open access system, so all the researchers can do that. They can go in and design uh, questions that they already know the answer to uh, and confirm that, in fact, oh, yeah, that's that's what we see. And so uh, that's a really good way of, of validating and, and, you know, letting the system earn your trust. Uh, Karis Life Sciences has a great website, David. Give us that uh, website address where we can learn more about Karis and about Code AI as well. www.karislifesciences.com. Well, David, always a pleasure. I I thank you for coming back, and I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Thank you, Neil. It's always a pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with David Spessler. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.